It's not been a good national bullying day. But um, there are there is a case. There is now a case to where bullying happened, the school ignored it, and now they're suing the school district. A family files lawsuits against the school administration, and they claim they ignored the bullying. But are they telling the truth? New lawsuit claims bullying in Mortimer Jordan High School was ignored by staff even after it became physical. ABC 3340's Valerie Bell is working for you tonight in Jefferson County. Valerie, legally the fight would be seen as an assault, but the lawsuit doesn't focus on the person who was throwing the punches. Stephen, this complaint was also filed against administrators. It says if the school had acted that the bullying would have never escalated. And it also says that they were aware of the bullying and the threats made to the student prior. It's this fight that happened in the halls of Mortimer Jordan High School. They broke her arm so badly that she had to have surgery. That's a serious injury. And would you say in this situation that you believe that the school system failed to act? Yes. In this situation, we have clear notification on uh, multiple prior instances where these young women uh, threatened physical harm on this young woman. Along with three minors, students at the school who allegedly participated in the bullying, the complaint filed claims the principal and assistant principals ignored warning signs leading up to the incident. What we really hope is that cases like this can bring about real constructive change in the schools where principals and assistant principals, counselors, teachers, everyone there at the school will take bullying seriously. Because if they don't, then it can lead to something like this. And now that the complaint has been filed, what are the next steps proceeding forward? Well, we would imagine that the next step will be for the school system, the principal and the assistant principal to file a motion to dismiss. In other words, saying we've done nothing wrong. We did reach out to the Jefferson County Board of Education. In a statement, I'm told they are aware of the lawsuit against the employees at the school and are reviewing the allegations, but also saying there's, quote, no reason to believe that our employees acted unprofessionally or improperly in discharging their duties under the circumstance in question. Now, the Board of Education also says because of the litigation, there will be no further comments about this lawsuit made at this time. Live in Jefferson County, Valerie Bell, ABC 3340 News. That's a great step to, f to follow through. If you feel like the school's not doing anything, that's a good step to file a lawsuit against the school district. Here's the article that talks about this from, talks about this. That complaint was filed from Circuit Court Jefferson County against three minors. But, um, our in a situation, the school system failed to act. That statement saying Jefferson County Board of Education has been has been made aware of a lawsuit that has been filed against several Mortimer Jordan High School employees. We are carefully reviewing the allegations made in the complaint, but I have no reason to believe that our employees acted unprofessionally and improperly in discharging their duties under circumstances in question. As a matter of litigation, in keeping with our general practice, we will not be issuing any further comment regarding the lawsuit. You can also report it via the form on the website. This is the whole lawsuit, 16 pages. The facts of this are from paragraphs 13 here in Senate and Full. Paragraph the court, I mean, this is what all of it says, 16 pages. The assistant principal Tim Reeves and assistant principal Hope Key with the minor. So the principal, so it's two assistant principals and the principals. The minors are involved as well as the assistant principal. Look at all this. 16 pages. Each minor defending complaint and or participated each minor participated in this. Each minor inspired the acts. The defendants key, Candy, and Reese failed their duty to minor plaintiff protect them from harm. In case of action. Each minor defendant breached her duty to, to minor plaintiff were jointly negligent. This whole 16 page lawsuit, count four, paragraphs one through 108 incorporated here in sound full. 
Each minor is alleged to conspire and or participate in the act in the assaulting. Assaults the real thing. 16 pages. Defense to be served by a clerk is Craig Candy is the principal. Hope Key is the assistant principal. And Tim Reeves. There's two assistant principals and one principal. The parent legal guardian of the minor. So there's three parental guardians, three adults here in this case. So the question is, would this go forward? If the school is saying, look, let's drop this. If the school's not willing to do anything, then I guess it will go forward. But the question is, can it can it be dismissed if the school's saying, let's put this behind us and do our best? Probably so. So again, if you feel like the school's not doing anything or feel like they're not doing anything to help you, that's a good chance to file a lawsuit. Hire an attorney and say, hey, the school's not doing anything, blah, 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 blah. There's videos on this, blah, 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 blah. And um, yeah. Let's end this. That's one of the main goals about my show is to stop bullying and speak up. Which is more bullying going on. And coming up next, they hired an investigator to look into bullying complaints at a high school in Minnesota. Plus, the administration ignored this bully, bullying, and a sixth grade was allegedly knocked unconscious, but no one helped. It's a case of schools ignoring bullying. Stay with us. Up front tonight, all this month, we are focusing on bullying. Now, earlier in the earlier this earlier this month, I played you Bully, the video game, to where you play as a, someone who is standing up to bullying by the name of James Hopkins. And in that game, the main goal of the game is to stand up to bullying. At that time, you are the bully. So I guess it's kind of the, you are the bully and you're standing up to bullying. Because if you're in story mode, you're trying to stand up to the bully by taking over the school, the least popular boy. I mean, that's what the game plot says. But there is, but this isn't a game. A sixth grade student allegedly knocked unconscious by bullies at school. The family says no one called for help. His family said the school is doing nothing to protect him. A sixth grade boy was allegedly knocked unconscious after an assault by his own classmates. His mother said and claims the school is doing nothing to protect him. Debbie Olche said her son was being bullied at Stevenson Middle School in Stone Mountain. She said she's been going to the school all year trying to get help for her child and has written emails and had meetings with the principal but she says nothing would stop the bullying it all came to head last week when she had to take her son to the emergency room herself because she said the school didn't call 911 her son was diagnosed with a concussion after he was assaulted by his bullies she's frustrated saying teachers won't change his class schedule to separate him from bullies and she says they didn't call for help when he got knocked out she said a lot of bullying at her at school is about her son's identity. He's adopted and white. Her family is black. The school district said they can't comment on the potential litigation, but said it's code of conduct expected to be followed and applied. This is their full statement. It says it is the long-standing practice of the DeKalb County School District not to comment on pending and put or potential litigation. DCSD reframes its commitment to safe and secure learning environments for all students and employees. District leaders, school administration staff, school resource officers, and campus safety personnel work intentionally to promote a culture that, that discourages discipline issues. By communicating expectations and consequences of misbehavior. 
When discipline issues arise, however, consequences are outlined as a student code of conduct, are expected to be followed and based on the instant celebrity and the student's age. Law enforcement charges are also applied as appropriate. That's what their statement says. So now, here's that video. It's the word green converse with the heart drawn on the right. Parents of a sixth grader are pulling their son out of school because they say he was bullied relentlessly and then knocked unconscious. 11 Alliance, Caitlin Ross joins us in the studio tonight. So, Caitlin, the family told you the school did not even seek medical attention after this incident? And his mom brought him straight to the ER where he was diagnosed with a concussion. The OJ family says they won't send their son back until the district can guarantee his safety. I've been coming to the school, um, calling, coming in person, my husband and I, because our son has been bullied, coming home complaining about bully being assaulted at school. Demi Oche says she's been asking Stevenson Middle School to protect her son since school started and the bullying began. But she says the school refuses to make any changes to make her son feel safe. And then he was attacked last week. They hired an attorney to try and help get answers about what happened. She is stuck with questions and questions and questions, especially since reports were made early in the semester, repeatedly, about the possibility of bullying, and nothing was done. A spokesperson for the district told me they don't comment on potential or pending litigation, but the school should follow the code of conduct outlined in the student handbook, and consequences up to law enforcement involvement should be applied when appropriate. So unfortunate, I can't imagine how frustrating things... You really need to talk to your kids. When you start talking to your kids, this is going to stop. All right, bullying in Parsons Middle School. Parents says this issue has been ignored by the administration. It's a case of administration ignoring the bullying. Like we looked at state laws. I mean, there are, let me recap this. Bullying laws by state. An interactive map. Cyberbullying.org. In California. Criminal sanction, yes. School sanction, yes. School policy, yes. Off campus, yes. But that failed. That failed in California when Parsons School, Middle School in Reading, in Reading has fallen under scrutiny for alleged bullying issues on campus. In one case, the father of a student says the bullying became so bad that he and his wife were forced to pull their daughter out of the school. Richard Kemp. Caparo's daughter, Leandra, was the third kid to attend Parsons. Caparo told K KRCR Sam, Sam, his daughter, had become the victim of constant bullying, both in person and online, from another female student who used to be a, her a friend. When, they took the, when she took the issue to school, which included the evidence of the social media attacks on her daughter, the school responded by issuing a three-day in-house suspension to the bully. But Capio says the school did nothing further, even when the problem persisted. After they got to spend, she got online and was bullying my daughter again, making bigger threats, saying that her and her eighth grade uncle were going to jump her, and that she should kill herself. The school suspension didn't even make a difference. On top of taking the punishment more severe. She believes the girl should have been taken off campus for the duration of her suspension. This is what it said. I was bullied so bad that the school back in 2011-13, my family had reported multiple times, nothing would be done. I switched to Singor, which I can't pronounce that word, and had a better life. Then it goes on to say, going through this now, my second grade son was being bullied by a fifth grade child. Richard isn't the only Parsons parent making these type of claims. Copiers show KRCR screenshots of several Facebook posts and comments from over frustrated moms and dads. They reached out to the Empire's elementary school to hear their response. The superintendent stressed how serious her office takes bullying allegations. 
However, she said if parents have concerns, they must report them to school instead of using social media to voice frustrations. Okay. Now there's another case of bullying in Minnesota. Some parents and students at uh, Fraser High School say bullying at the school has become out of control. According to Superintendent Terry Kangler, the district is aware of the bullying complaints and an investigator has been hired to look into those claims. He says the investigator will be interviewing students and gathering information for consideration. Parents are expected to express their concerns about the bullying at the high school during the next school meeting, which is scheduled on November 14th. We'll keep you posted on what's been going on. So, um, That's really a um, issue to look at. So uh, the question is, how can you address bullying at work and school? Well, that for you when we return. And Lizzo, we call being bullied at school by her peers and a choice of music. This is the case of American singer being bullied when she went before she was a singer at school, before she was a singer. So stay with us. Up to speed now in Uvalde, state investigation fueled flawed understanding of delay during the police response in Uvalde. Now, if you remember, during that time, it took 70, it took over 70 minutes for the police to respond. The school police chief was singled out for blame, but at times visual investigation found that scores of trained officers, including those from the elite border patrol unit, took as many of the same steps. These, this footage shows the lead agent from the Border Patrol's elite SWAT unit learned immediately after he arrived that the children were trapped inside the classrooms with the government. It took about 37 minutes to acquire the equipment and device these plans before a breach was launched. A map. This was the map. Mr. Ardana was positioned at the south end of the hallway during the response, physically cut from the main police hub. And there was, there was this guy, this was this was this person approaching the classroom. Visible, this was approaching classrooms from room 11 and the 12. So that's where the officers were. That's the acting chief, that's lieutenant, and that's the staff sergeant, that's Officer Ruse, and that's basically all there is. In this one, lean rooms 112 and 112, 111. That's the real time, 1136. That's Arnano's group covered, covered from the officers. So that's Chief Arnano. That's Chief Peter Arnano right there. And this one. That's when the police body came in. The spirit of crews grabbing images and language. As Sergeant Cardinal by the body cam, with the body cam who's in the south entrance. That's Chief Arnando running, and the city officers are right there. So the he gets in. He's like it's an AR. He's through here. That those are the classrooms one eleven and one twelve. That's Staff Sergeant Canales from his body cam. That's, I mean, all these visual investigations. This is all from the real time. And this one, that school board trustee, 
Five minutes in response to the Vancouver officers in the hallway. So this one has the school board trustee Suarez. That's the constable field and constables are more. Three minutes later, the first shows one of the instructors discuss no negotiation with the gunman. He gets in saying... So it was all about Bourne and Shield trying to negotiate with him. Now Bortat takes control. And during that real time, it's going to take some, and they say it's going to take some time. At 12.21 p.m. and 37 minutes of silence in the classroom, the gunman resumes shooting. 11 minutes. 12 minutes. Twenty-three minutes. Ranger Kendall had the keys. He had the keys right there. That's from the janitor's room. And this is the aftermath of this. So yeah, that's probably a good way to update people on. Now, how about Oxford? Well, as we said, the trial is postponed. To give you guys an update, the parents of the parents of the shooter once once again is seeking to get the case against them thrown out. This time appealing to the Michigan Supreme Court. The attorneys have filed appeals with the state Supreme Court in an effort to strike down the charges against the parents in connection with the mass shooting. They're each facing four counts of attorney mental after four students were killed. When the sudden allegedly opened fire in school hours, prosecutors accused the parents of gross negligence, saying they neglected their son as Determining mental state and purchased a firearm for him, which then he used for the school. The judge and prosecuting attorneys hope to wrap up the trial before the holiday season and before the, the anniversary of the fatal mass shooting. Defense attorneys in June seem to believe that the October 24th trial date would not be achievable, but they did not officially request the adjournment of this at that time. But the trial via the crumbly facing 24 felony charges and adult is also scheduled for January next year. He's again he's charged with one count of terrorism causing death, four counts of first degree murder, seven counts of assault with intent to murder, and twelve counts of possession of firearm for the commission of felony. And the crumbly expects to be called in the stand in his parents' trial according to the parents' defense attorneys. But the Office of Defense Attorneys and Open County Prosecutors have maintained that James and Jennifer Crumbly Bear, both, bear some responsibility to the deaths of these deaths. The prosecutors also argue about that the parents willfully ignored the needs and well-being of their son and that the threat posed to others. So, what's going to happen with the trial? We'll keep you posted as this goes along. So, how do you, how do you handle work, bullying and school at workplace? We'll give you some tips when we return. Stay with us. All this month on this broadcast, we are focusing on bullying, which is one of my main goals, which is why I created the Facebook group, Stop Bullying and Speak Up. So, the question, I mean, bullying is always happening in the workplace. So, the question is, how, how can you address bullying at school and at work? Here's what, here's what the BlueShieldCalifornia.com says. When you should seek help, if you find you're having your usual trouble sleeping, change your appetite, feeling overwhelmed, it's time to consult mental health. This is from um, the California thing, making a difference. So, it's particularly problematic for a youth. A 2021 report from last report last year indicates the school crime and safety the Department of Education finds that 22% of students reported bullying, being bullied during the academic year, and students are identified lesbian, gay. By or transgender are more than twice likely to experience bullying than their LGBT peer, LGBT peers. Beyond these numbers, the ripple effects of our youth and the families of school is significant. It's always making a difference. So, if you feel like you're being harassed as an employee, my advice would be talk to your supervisor immediately. 
Don't sit there. Don't be sitting there and ignore it. Deal with it like that. Talk to your supervisor and they will take care of it like that. Same thing with schools. Talk to an assistant principal, talk to an assistant principal administrator and they will take care of it like that. If you feel they're not doing enough, then you can hire an attorney, file a lawsuit, take it to the media, go on social media, blah, 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 like that. All right. I want to take you back to Corpus Christi. As you know, three years ago, three years ago on the broadcast, there was... We, I talked about bullying. I talked to a, this guy named Eric T. who runs the Corpus Christi Chronica about about bullying. And and if you and if so, uh, let me give you guys a let me give you guys the clip. So that time I didn't even know. Cause I didn't even know we like usually I do like three breaks and then after the third break we just wrap it up. There we go. There it is. Let's watch. Let's watch the clip. All right, so let's get to that conversation. ago I regret saying the name incidentally I don't regret it for a second I 
I believe everything that what she said. I mean, I believe everything. That crossed the line for me. And uh, years ago during the pandemic, that was three years ago. Three years ago, I created the group. And uh, since then, 40, we're over 40 members. And I regret ever talking about saying her name. Because bullying is just unacceptable behavior. So, um, let's get to that story. Received from a boyfriend of her son's finger. No, we're not doing that because I do not want, I don't want to throw people, I don't want to throw, because I, I don't want to throw people I know in the blender. Because let me tell you. Things have got to change. We're just outraged. This is just unacceptable behavior, and I'm not feeling like playing that clip because if I did, I'm throwing the people I know under the bus and putting them in the blender. So, if I play that, I send the name, I send her name, but if, but if I decide to play that story, I wouldn't be doing this. Let's look at a case from about three years ago about cyberbullying carries fines, possible jail time for those violators. Uh, did you know at least one out of every four teens in the country will be bullied? And these days, bullying doesn't just happen on the playground or in school. A lot of times it happens online. Roland Rodriguez is at City Hall this morning. And Roland, I understand there are some parents who are taking action against cyberbullying. Anyone through an electronical device, particularly on social media. And people are now turning to lawyers for help. Bullying has been a problem for generations, but it's grown to a new level through the use of cell phones, computers, and tablets. Number one, block the person that is bullying you uh, after you have taken pictures and saved evidence of the bullying and the comments. Uh, once you save that evidence, uh, you block them for your own sanity. Take it to the police department and they in turn will take it to our district attorney here locally, Mark Gonzalez, who takes these kinds of things very seriously. When it comes so to cyberbullying, it's against the law and carries hefty fines and possible jail time for violators. Uh, they might get a friendly visit from the FBI or from local authorities for cyberbullying, and they can face the first time misdemeanor, and that's nothing to laugh about. You end up on probation. Uh, you, all your codes uh, to your social media accounts will be monitored, and uh, you will lose a lot of privileges. Second time, it can go up to a class A or even a low-grade felony, which means prison time. With the idea that cyberbullying cases are going to court, people might want to start thinking twice before using their keyboards to attack others. However, it may take a while before they see some justice. Uh, the law is set up to protect you. Unfortunately, the uh, local, uh, state, and even the federal uh, government officials are still trying to catch up with all the complaints that are going on. Bullying can continue long beyond middle and high school. About 60 million Americans are victimized by bullies. Your words uh, are weapons against somebody. It can take somebody's life, and that's why uh, we have these laws in place. Curiosity. Why do they bully? What? What's the point of it? Why did the I feel it taken? Five years ago. Innocent people 
and finding a way to make me do. Mm, that video right there has gone viral here in the last few days. It shows a young boy named Keaton who is tormented by bullies at school. His mother posted that video after pulling him out of school one day because of the ongoing bullying. Well, within days of posting the video, it was viewed more than 20 million times, and he gained support from celebrities across the country. This kid is all time. He's a legend. Go check him out. His name's Keaton. I would love for you, Keaton Jones, to be my date to the Pitch Perfect 3 premiere on Tuesday. However, this morning there is a bit of a downside. There's been some backlash after the surfacing of old social media posts suggesting racism in Keaton's mom's recent past. Still, though, many supporters are standing by that young boy while chastising the mom for her inappropriate post. Let's just wrap this up. Come on, on Friday, self defense. We're going to talk about self defense defining, self defense classifying bullying. Does, does it create more bullying or does it stop bullying? Also, some local karate, also local karate structures are using martial arts to help stop this bullying. And we're also going to flash back to when two years ago, when TCISD held a board meeting for parents addressing bullying. I may play that clip. I was going to play, but uh, I may not. I may. I got to think about it. So, um, Look for all that on a Friday. Trust my instincts. That's all of this edition of Game Break Wednesday going to Thursday. We'll see you again with Game Break Friday. For all of us here at YouTube, I gave me a break. Stop bullying, speak up. Let's always say that. Goodbye, night everyone.